Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage. Field Manual Number 1. A Three-Part Solution to the State. A collaborative effort by the Office of Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage, OSSSS, and the LEGO Distribution Network, LDN. Printing and distribution authorized by the Harmon Husband V. Preservation Committee. Part 1. Peaceful Sedition. Ben Quaker, Nottonshire, South Coast Free District. Part 2. Simple Sabotage. Prepared under the guidance of the Director of Agitation and Aggravation, Grigory Rasputin V, with extensive team support for research, testing, and Americanized grammar. LDN Darknet Branch, Yefimovich, Pokrovskoy, Free Oblast. Part 3. Ethics-Based Selective Irregular Warfare. Prepared under the guidance of the Committee of Vigilance in conjunction with the Orange Free Regulators and the remaining elders of the Bald Knobbers. LDN Darknet Branch, Bavarian Gulch, Ozark Free District. Authoritarian Disclaimer. This manual should always be referred to as a work of fiction, as a poor attempt at humor, as political satire, and as a parody of the 1944 OSS publication, Simple Sabotage Field Manual, not to be taken seriously. The distribution and contents of this manual should be controlled, and efforts should be made to keep it from falling into the hands of the immature, the authoritarian, or any other childish types that may not have the mental capacity to tolerate alternative viewpoints. Any representative of authority who would try to use this work as evidence in a criminal case should be mocked and shamed for not being intelligent enough to get the joke. This should not be difficult since, as we all know, those who tend to be authoritarian are usually so self-absorbed with their own inflated ego that there is no room in their tiny sad soul for humor. After all, who would seriously object to having wonderful overlords such as those provided to us by our benevolent governments in their crony superstructure? No one would ever actually want anything bad to happen to anyone in authority. We all love our political masters. This product is covered by a Bipcot NoGov license. Use and reuse by anyone, except governments or their agents, is granted. Further use permission. This product is purposefully not a registered ISBN product. Please feel free to use, reuse, distribute, copy, reprint, take credit for, steal, broadcast, mock, hate, quote, misquote, or modify this product in any way you see fit. Sell it, make copies and hand it out at concerts, make t-shirts, print it on flying discs, or do anything else because intellectual property is a state-based haven of the weak, the stupid, and those lacking confidence in their own ability. Part 1. Peaceful Sedition. Chapter 1. The Purpose is Not. Many books, articles, and scholarly papers will begin with some kind of statement of the case, an introduction to the topic, or a synopsis of the concept being proposed. Additionally, the underlying purpose of almost every such writing is to convert someone to, or convince someone of the author's viewpoint. I won't be doing that. First and foremost, the purpose of this field manual is not to convert or convince anyone of anything. This manual is written for those who already accept its premise and are, or soon will be actively engaging in matters of the kind or similar to those covered in the manual. The purpose of this manual is to create an overview of why these actions will take place as a record for posterity and to train and prepare those who take such actions to do them as wisely and as safely as possible. Additionally, included in this manual is information that the activist may use to help explain why he or she is taking the path they have chosen to follow. This information is not intended to be an exhaustive work of reference. It is simply a first step in arming and training our friends for the unfortunate and difficult task that is before us. It is intended to be modified and expanded as new information arrives and as the need develops. My only goal in assembling this manual is to share the wisdom I have learned from my own successes and failures over the years and share that which I have learned from my mentors as well as what I have learned from observing the foolish and their repeated and predictable follies. Those who have a mind to listen and apply my words to their activism will do so by their choice, not because of a sales tactic or some emotional plea. The truth of my words will ring in their ears like a tuning fork to the musician, or it will miss it altogether. So if you thought you could use this book as an evangelical tool to give to your friends to convince them that roads can exist without governments, you are mistaken. This is not an introduction to libertarian thought, nor is it an anarchist primer. This is a field manual for winning a war against the enemy of humanity, the state. Just for the record, I am a grandfather, I am a Quaker, I am a minister, and I am bound by no oath of allegiance. I am not a pacifist, however, I respect pacifists and would never try to persuade them to change. I believe in the zero aggression principle, and I believe I have a responsibility to protect myself and those closest to me with whatever means, including violent and even deadly measures as the need arises. 
As a Quaker, I feel no obligation to attempt to convert anyone to any viewpoint. Therefore, I do not support evangelism, neither on religious nor philosophical topics. I believe every thinking adult should know what they believe and why they believe it, and I believe every thinking adult should be prepared to explain their beliefs in a logical and consistent manner. Likewise, I don't believe in any obligation to explain anything to anyone. If I choose to speak, I will speak the truth as I know it. If you choose to heed my words, then do so. If my words offend you, don't read them. For the last 38 years, I have resisted, opposed, or openly fought the state as best as I could with the knowledge and resources I had at my disposal. Much of those efforts were misguided and wrong-headed. Some were downright foolish. I often took the route proposed by those most influential in the movement at the time. Thus, I voted for prominent libertarian leaders, donated to their campaigns and causes, bought their books, attended their speeches, supported their websites and institutes, and generally parroted what they taught. I embraced counter-economics and agorism by living entirely off-grid in the Mojave Desert while supporting myself through black market activity and paying as little in taxes as possible. I ran an above-ground, unlicensed business in Reno, Nevada in a highly regulated industry. I taught myself hacking techniques and ran an MP3 sharing server on a NASA computer before Napster existed. I took my children out of school and rejected the homeschooling curriculum before the word unschooling was invented. In short, if a libertarian or market anarchist has taught a method for obtaining freedom, I have either tried it or I have closely observed others trying it. It is with this body of experience that I present my conclusion. The so-called liberty movement is doing it wrong. With the exception of some Bitcoin activists and some computer hackers, those people most celebrated with fame and recognition in the liberty movement are usually deeply committed to one or two of the four conventional strategies that have been proven over and over to be either marginally successful at best or outright counterproductive. More on the four conventional strategies later. Typically, this fact is ignored by the wide-eyed followers of those dynamic personalities that flutter about selling these worn-out methods. Therefore, we have this field manual not for those still transfixed by the celebrity libertarian evangelists, nor those with their minds stuck in dusty old books and worn-out methods, but for those who have come to the same conclusion that I have, doing the same things over and over expecting different results while viciously defending old field methods is both foolish and tiresome to watch. I expect most people who begin to read this book will reject it outright as soon as they realize that the premise is not to only encourage specific violent actions, but to teach peaceful people how and when to safely and wisely commit those actions. Of course, I am speaking of staying within the zero aggression principle, and I am talking about respecting individual private property, but I am also specifically addressing the fictions of public property and government property, and I am talking about violent and sometimes bloody self-defense, along with disciplined preemptive self-defense. Over the last 150 years, a number of well-known anarchists have advocated some type of violence as a method of achieving freedom, including several prominent libertarian or market-type anarchists from as early as the 1960s. However, in each of these, there was some flaw in either principle or in method of execution. Perhaps their plan was vague, or it depended upon some rounding up cattle car type government actions to spark the events, or perhaps there was a blaring lack of forethought and wisdom in the planning, or it depended upon revolution, which as history plainly shows, only results in a new government. So, without dwelling on failures of the past, and in order to develop a plan for victory, we must consider that people are different, and there is no dishonor in that difference. The vast majority of liberty activists are and should remain peaceful. They should endeavor to develop self-control in the face of oppression and resist the urge to lash out at our captors. Again, there is no dishonor in peacefulness. The first section of this manual is aimed at the majority of activists, the ones I refer to as the above ground. Then again, there are those who simply cannot control their urge to physically resist the authoritarians. Perhaps they aren't suited for actual warfare, but they certainly cannot restrain their actions to the realm of speech. This group of activists are the ones who should take careful note of the next section of this manual, titled Simple Sabotage. And then there is the tiny minority that do not fit in either of the above categories. They are the few who need to read the final section of this manual, titled Irregular Warfare. Thus, we have this three-part field manual that you hold before you. It is not for everyone. It is targeted at those who need to read it, and all others should openly and loudly denounce it. Every above-ground activist that reads this book should, after finishing it, proclaim it heresy, deny its validity, and then pass it on to that one person you know that needs it.